Hey guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome to a brand new game. I've heard what you've been saying. You've been asking, are there going to be any other games on this channel? And the answer is very much yes. Welcome to RimWorld. This is a very interesting game. Um, if you've never heard of it before, I would explain it probably as a cross between like Prison Architect and a city builder, kind of. Uh, but much more difficult. So we're going to play uh, kind of the classic mode. We'll say some challenge and we'll start a new world. Uh, the seed is fine. We'll go with that. This is a game where essentially you are three survivors of a crash on an alien planet on the outer rim, hence the name Rim World. And your goal is to build a colony and survive while also keeping your colonists very much alive and sane, and uh, it's much more difficult than you might think. This game loves to throw curveballs at you. So let's try and find a suitable location to start. I'd like to kind of be in the mountains uh, so that we can use some of that as natural terrain. Let's also look at factions. Looks like we get along with blue and green, yellow and red are bad. So I'd like to be relatively close to blue and green. This seems pretty good. Let's look at average temperature, 56 in overall, 33 in winter, 80 in summer. That's not too bad. Limestone and granite, um, granite, marble, and slate. I think that's a little bit better for us. Rainfall. Animals can graze. This seems pretty good. Let's go with this. This is a temperate forest. So then we hit next and we get to pick our colonists. We get three uh, and we can't like say, I want this skill and that skill, but we can randomize and try and find what we're looking for. So I want at least one guy who has at least a 10 in shooting. Um, however, I would like him to be a bit more well-rounded. We're also looking for someone with good medicinal and cooking, and then someone who's good at construction and growing, and honestly, mining as well. Mining is going to be very important. So let's start kind of randomizing these. Uh, this is actually a pretty good colonist, very well-rounded, good social, good growing, decent cooking. I think this one might be a keeper, Gerald Sir. <laughs> His name is Sir. So we'll hold on to him for now. Um, let's randomize you. Good artistic, decent medicine, not really good at anything else. We'll just kind of go through until we sort of find what we're looking for here. Uh, this one has a smoke leaf dependence. I really don't want to deal with drug addictions in the early game, so we're going to pass on that. Okay, so she has good medicine. She's very, she's a good doctor, which is going to be actually very important for us. Uh, she's not incapable of anything, which is good. She's anti-drug, which is good. I think this might be our doctor. We definitely want to have a doctor, for sure, because things are going to go horribly wrong. And she is capable of shooting, so that might be good. Let's randomize a bit more. And that's actually really good, too. 11 shooting, 11 melee, 8 in medicine, good at social, okay at construction. That might be... That might be our defense expert. Good at a lot of things, actually. Addiction counselor. Incapable of firefighting or cleaning and a pyromaniac. Uh, <laughs> let's keep looking. It's actually really important to find kind of the right villagers. And you're, it's almost impossible to find a truly perfect colonist. That's almost never going to happen. However, you want to start off with certain skills. Uh, this guy's actually really good for us. Good melee. Important that he has very good mining because we're going to be doing a lot of mining. He's decent at construction. He's decent at crafting. Uh, I think this is probably going to be our kind of well-rounded individual. So then we just need someone who is very good at shooting. 
Let's see. Uh, 11 is not good enough. I'd like someone even better than that. Preferably. Although, if we do come across someone super good a little bit farther on, then we'll certainly go for it. 12 at shooting, that's not bad. Bodyguard. He's very good at shooting. He is psychically sensitive. And he is also anti-bionics. I think that's okay. And he isn't really incapable of anything except for, sh for social stuff. So I think this is a pretty good mix. I think this will do quite well for us. Uh, let's go ahead and start our colony. And actually, I should rename some of these guys so I know. Uh, we're going to rename Darby as... Uh, let's call him Nails, because he's going to be our construction, or actually, let's call him Grunt, because he's going to be our miner and our, uh, engineer, essentially, our guy who does all the constructing and stuff. Uh, he's actually a pretty good crafter as well. German is our bodyguard, let's call him, um, let's call him Captain. Why not? We'll call him Captain. And then Glasses, that's a good name for a medic and vet. Okay, now we finally get into our colony. And it's going to generate the map for us. We arrive on the planet and we crash. Right here. And this is actually a really good starting location. So we want to take a minute to pause the game and kind of look around the map and just see what sort of resources we have available to us and all that kind of stuff. Um, we will be attacked by enemies from time to time. That is bound to happen. Uh, so we'd like to find a spot with a good natural choke point. Honestly, this is a great one because no enemies are going to be able to come at us from over here, they're going to all basically have to come up this little area right here. So this is actually a very good defensible location. Uh, it also gives us a lot of room to expand and mine into the hills and all that sort of stuff. So I think, honestly, this is a great starting spot for us. Um, so let's go ahead and the first thing I want to do is create a stockpile zone. And this is basically where we're just going to put all of our stuff. Uh, let's just put it Let's see. I mean, we're ultimately going to end up taking up like this entire area, but this looks like a pretty good spot right here. So we'll say this area right there. That's going to be our stockpile for basically everything at this point. Okay. And then I also want to say no corpses go in there whatsoever. And then we'll say... Um... I want to establish two more stockpile zones right off the bat while we're thinking about it. We want a dumping stockpile. This is just going to be for random stuff, right? This will be like just junk. Uh, let's maybe put that down here. We'll make it like 12 by 12. And this will be for everything except for human-like corpses. And then I want to create one final dumping zone that's specifically for human corpses uh, because I don't want my colonists to see hu any human corpses, if at all possible. I want to avoid that from happening. Uh, so let's put them maybe down over here. We'll say this is where human corpses go. And... We will clear all and say human-like corpses. Okay, so there's our dumping zones all taken care of. Uh, now, we want to go into work. Uh, we're going to say... Uh, for now, let's just say... Work until... 1 o'clock. Get a two-hour lunch break. And then you're done working. Uh, and we'll say... An hour in the morning when you wake up of joy and an hour before you go to bed. So that'll that's just kind of our general work schedule, right? We can take all this stuff and tell them, yeah, it's okay to pick all this up now. So let's make sure we do that. They're going to haul all of this to the stockpile zone. Now, let's see. As far as my colonists go, 
I think Captain is my melee or my uh, weapons expert. So I want I want uh, Captain to have the bolt action, and then Glasses is the pistol, and Grunt will take the knife. Uh, let's see. That should all be good. We want to unforbid all of that so they take it where it belongs. Okay, I think that's good. Uh, let's get this, let's get them moving and doing things. And while we're working on that, let's go in here and go manual priorities and let's, let's fix this up. So we want everyone to be able to firefight, everyone to be a patient, and glasses is my number one doctor. Okay. Um... And then our backup doc doctor will be captain, in case glasses can't do anything. Um, captain is going to be our number one cook, or our number one hunter. So that's going to be a priority there. Uh, we want everyone to be priority hauling, at least in the early game, for now. We'll uh, And we'll say... Mining as well. You're going to be our number one miner for sure. As well as our number one constructor. We just want to kind of get this stuff going. Glasses is good at research. So we'll say that's fine. You will research stuff. We just kind of want to arrange these. The higher the number, the more, the, the more they prioritize it. Uh, and then the farther to the left it is, the higher it is in priority as well. So first they'll do all the ones, right? So you, they would be a patient before they would haul. And then after that, they'll go to the twos and they'll do the stuff from left to right. And then they'll go to the threes and go from left to right. And that's basically how they figure out what's important. As far as growing, uh, glasses will be our main grower, which is actually really important. There we go. Let's do that. Who's good at cooking? Captain is pretty good at cooking. Uh, I have very poor social skills. Flick should be number one. That's basically just turning power switches on and off. Um, let's set the, all that to two. Plant cutting can be two across the board. Tailoring. You're pretty good at tailoring. Pretty good at smithing. Pretty good at crafting. So we'll do that. And... Let's just set the rest of these to three. And four. Okay. So I think for now... That should be perfectly fine. Okay. So now we need to start setting up them, some things. First... Thing I want to set up is I want to, to uh, put over top of this area a cover. And it's not perfectly symmetrical, but you know what? That's okay. But we want to put a covering over this, otherwise these resources are going to start to decay on us, and that's going to be very bad. We don't want that to happen. Then we'll go zone, build roofed area, and we'll just cover all of this with a roof. Because that's going to be very important. Let's uh, speed this up a little bit. Go to double speed. And then that will prevent all of this stuff from decaying on us. Because we want we want our stockpiles to remain good. Um, now, we're going to go structure. And let's just make a very simple little... Oh, no. Just kidding. Cancel that. Let's make sure we plan this a little bit. So we'll need one, two, three. So we're going to go like that with a door right here. Temporarily. Because this is going to be our initial little bedroom. They're not going to like it. It's going to be pretty terrible. They're going to kind of hate it. But you know what? They'll have a place to sleep at least. And we'll say, get the floor in there as wood as well. And then we'll go one, two, three with beds. Three beds for now. 
We will get for we will get more colonists as the game progresses. So we'll need more beds eventually. Uh, ideally, though, my plan is to kind of dig into the mountain over here and get things going that way. Mining has its advantages. Some of the resources in the game that are relatively rare are like steel, and you can see it right here. So we can mine steel uh, to get more of that. All sorts of good stuff. So we should be fine. Uh, let's speed this up a bit more. There's not really a whole lot we can do on the first day. We just kind of need to get them moving. Oh, you know what? I guess they, uh, we're out of wood. So let's do a chop wood command. Uh, let, let, let's do a chop wood command. There we go. We'll just get a bunch of wood from over there. We don't want them idle. That's not a good thing. Speed up. Go chop wood so we can finish building this little house. That's important. Uh, we will probably not be able to finish it by the first day. Maybe we will. It'll be very close. Construction failed. Oh, look at that. Okay. So then we set owner and we'll just go down the line. There we go. And let them finish building this. And there we go. They have a place to sleep, at least. It's not much, but it's something. And they're going to work into a relatively late hour at night. So now, let's start planning out some other stuff here. We want to go orders. Mine. And I'm thinking... Let's see. Ultimately, we will want power. Um... Hmm, probably here and here. We're going to want two generators, like, right off the bat. I think. So then we need to think about where we're going to put... other stuff. So if we put our generators here, we will need a battery room. So let's go mine. And the battery room should be probably about that big. We'll be fine. Because then that'll hold five batteries, which will be plenty. But we'll let them start digging that out. We're also going to want a cooler. That'll be extremely important, in fact. So let's start planning that out here. We're going to want double doors. We'll come to over here, I th uh, actually, wait. We're gonna need the cooler to be close to this. Um, so let's go, like, here. We'll say this will be our cooler, and this is gonna be used primarily for food. Um, hmm. Like that. We'll cancel the one in the middle so that we don't get a collapse. Yeah, that seems good. Okay. So then we'll go floors. I like to make the floors in my battery holding room out of concrete. And then we'll also say... Haul these rocks out of there. There we go. All those. Get get rid of that stuff. Yeah. So then we go back to orders. Go to mine. We say these two, these are going to be our, um, our cooler units, right? So then we'll say here this will be the entrance to our uh, thing to our cooler. So our cooler units will go here. Our batteries are going to go over here. So let's go to power. And let's make one, two, three batteries for now. That'll be plenty. And then we'll do two generators. And some power conduits. Like so. And then we'll need these to come to there. 
And the reason we need a cooler is because food and, and anything organic, for the most part, is going to deteriorate and essentially spoil within three days, give or take, if I don't. And that makes it very difficult to accumulate large, large amounts of food and all that kind of stuff because you, it, it spoils. Like, what's the point of doing a bunch of hunting and all that kind of stuff if it's just going to spoil on you? So we're going to make this into a cooler to hold our food. And we want it, it needs to be temperature controlled and all that kind of good stuff. We are going through our steel very quickly. Luckily, I already did notice that area down here where we have some more that we can mine if we need it. So that's good. This should provide us plenty of power for our cooler. That's almost done. There we go. All right. So we have solar generators that are now charging up our batteries. We don't actually have the coolers yet, but that's fine. Uh, let's see. Temperature. Cooler. Let's just flip these around. We'll put one right here. How much steel do we have? We have enough. Okay, good. So all is not lost. Not yet, anyway. Let them keep doing their thing. So basically, our priorities here are survival, followed by... Uh, happiness, and then everything else. So, we want to make sure we get our cooler in place. We want to make sure we get all of our food and stuff ready to go. Oh, we're getting visitors. They seem to have stuff to trade. Okay, who is our social expert? I don't think we really have anyone who's good at it. Yeah, uh, Grunt is our best <laughs> social person which is not exactly the best but you know what whatever so come over here and trade we'll give that a try maybe i should have picked someone who's a little bit better at social but as i we will get more colonists later they'll come to us through various events okay so honestly i think i want to buy all of the medicine because medicine is going to go really fast uh i don't want to buy components for that much but i'm gonna i'll take the i'll take the medicine for sure we won't have a way to get more medicine outside of trade for quite some time so every chance i get to buy it i should probably take that i'll let these guys mine and all that kind of stuff and Glasses is stargazing, which is the most fun thing there is to do around here right now. That'll change. We'll get there. We'll make horseshoes and things for them to do. What are you already in a bad mood about? Tons of joy. Eight without a table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get there. Acute pain. Okay, I don't know why you're hurting, but whatever. We are going to need a dining room table and a dining room in the near future. What we'll probably do is, uh, once we get the cooler in place, we'll expand this building and make it into some sort of a dining room is kind of what I'm thinking. But the, the cooler is the number one priority. More than anything else right now. And I will say, this is a game that has an astonishing amount of depth. It's relatively easy to learn. It's very difficult to master. I certainly do not claim to be a master of it, and I've probably got maybe 30 hours, maybe a little bit more. I've known of this game, and I've played in the past quite a lot kind of on my own time, but um, not for extended amounts of time. At some point, we will get hit with some really nasty stuff that is just kind of bad luck, and there's not really going to be a whole lot we can do about it. So we'll have to see what happens there, but we'll figure it out as we go. We'll let them finish mining all of this out. Uh, and actually, temperature. We'll do that. We can make the other cooler unit right here. We might only need the one, but I'd, I'd rather have the two just in case, especially since this will quite possibly get expanded at some point. And then the other thing we want to do is make a spot for a table. Ah, uh, mad animal. 
Okay. Um, we'll just say hunt. That, uh, you know what? I'm not even worried about that guy. He's way over there. He's attacking these settlers, or the, the, oh. Actually, there's a bunch of good stuff over here. Package survival meals? So maybe we will let him attack the, the visitors. It's not my fault if they got attacked. Not my problem. Let these guys go back to mining. We'll let this finish getting dug out. Are you still hunting? Mm, I don't know. What are you doing, Grunt? Captain? Captain's not hunting. Yeah, maybe it's been dealt. Maybe the problem was dealt with and I didn't see. That would be perfectly fine. Okay, so here is what will ultimately be our storage room. Let's take those. Haul that stuff out. Uh, we want to go floors. We want this whole thing to have a wood floor. And then we want a couple of lights in here like so. And then structure, we want a door and a door. And that'll help, uh, that's basically going to allow them to get in there. And it kind of creates like an airlock so that a lot of the heat doesn't escape. In theory, anyway. We'll see if it actually works out that way. Uh, the other thing I need to do is take this power conduit and run it to right here. Because we're going to have an electric stove right here for cooking. Which might not be the most sanitary way to do it, having uh, our food preparation and stuff in the freezer. But you know what? It'll be faster. It'll be a lot more efficient. Uh, that's what I've done in previous colonies, and it seems to work the best. Or in previous colonies that I've played on my own, anyway. We'll also want to do something to defend this choke point. We've got a nice natural choke point right here. Um, and then this. I'd like to maybe wall this whole thing off. We'll see. There we go. So they're going to start paving this entire thing. There's some lighting in there. Um, are they going to have enough wood? I think they will. Yeah, oh, yeah. We've got plenty of wood left. That'll work. Okay. Once the doors are in place, it doesn't make sense to, uh, to start cooling it just yet since our doors aren't actually functional, but they will be. And then you guys just need to haul all that stuff out. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so this is now officially indoors. So let's say we want this to be target temperature of... Uh, let's say 26 degrees Fahrenheit. For those of you who use Celsius, that's a couple degrees below freezing. 30, I believe it's 32 Fahrenheit is freezing. But that's cool enough that this will be ac acceptable as a food storage area. So then we need to go zone. Well, actually, let's let them clean all this up first. Because this all needs to be cleaned before we can really do stuff with it. And actually, let's go production. Electric stove right here. And a butcher table right there. Work speed penalty, that's fine. So they'll use it a little bit slower, but it still come, I, I think we still come out ahead. Uh, we're not going to mess with the thrombos that they're talking about, these guys, because they are very dangerous. They can be uh, profitable, but I don't think it's worth it, honestly. There we go. Let them clean up all the mess. That seems good. And then they just need to build this. So now we go zone. And we say this stockpile right here. This is now for animal corpses. So basically anything we hunt. Uh, actually, let's clear all. Animal corpses. Foods. And then any medicine and drugs. Uh, and actually any plants, plant matter as well. Okay, so that all goes there. 
And then here we say foods are no longer allowed in this stockpile. Neither are medicines or drugs uh, or plants. There we go. So that's all good. And then where did we say, I think I'm trying to, oh, right down here. This is our, our dumping zone. This is no longer for animal corpses. Okay, there we go. So we now have a functional cooler for storing our foods. That's awesome. So then we want to come to our butcher table and create some bills and be like, hey, if there are any creatures to butcher, do it, right? Process the any creatures we find. That's important. And then we can hunt these turkeys and we'll get some food going. Once we get our electric stove going, we'll be able to get some um, uh, some meal production going for us as well. We also want a dining room. So let's think about that. I'm thinking dining room right here. Is that going to be big enough? No, no, it's not actually. So we'll go like that. And then we'll say door there. Put a wooden floor in. Put a little torch down there. And then furniture. We want a short table. with a couple of chairs. And so that's our dining room. That way they actually have a place to eat, which is going to make them happier. Happier in general, anyway. Uh, actually, you know what? I Oh, we're getting a raid. Okay, so they're gonna prepare for a while. It is one raider with a knife. Okay, so I'm not really concerned about you. Um, And she has a very long way to walk. So we're just gonna kind of let her wander for a bit. Once she starts to get close, I'll get into position and we'll be able to defend ourselves without too many problems. And it'll, it'll give us a notification when the time comes for her to actually attack. But I'll just draft everybody, basically take manual control of all of them, and it will be fine. Uh, and we actually are... Compl oh, alright, so she is beginning the attack. So let's draft everybody. All right, Captain is our best attacker. Uh, this is basically our choke point. Let's put Captain there. Glasses are is our other fire. -er. <laughs> our other weapon, our other uh, firearms user is what I mean to say. Uh, hey, Grunt, like if you could uh, get uh, Captain go there. Grunt, go here. There we go. All right. And then we pause. As soon as she comes into range, I should start shooting. Yep, there we go. And you're dead. Okay, so we're going to forbid that. Let's look at Emily's stats. Shoot, decent shooting. Not horrendous. We may actually want to capture her. For now, let's say strip, because uh, we want to take any of her clothes, any of that kind of stuff for ourselves if we can. Uh, we will put up a um, doo -doo -doo -doo. We're going to put up a wall right here with a door. And another bed right there for prisoners. And a torch. Okay. And if she lives long enough, we will capture her and put her in that bed. Oh, also, undraft. 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 Uh, and captain. Which, this one's your bed? For medical. So we're going to say captain, rest until healed. Alright, there we go. And maybe... Uh, you know, as I said, maybe we'll be able to actually 
capture Emily? I have a feeling that Emily's not going to live long enough, because we have to construct all of this before that would be possible. So we'll see what happens. If we're able to capture Emily, great. If not, well, it is what it is. We do have Glasses, though, who is a solid doctor. So if we're able to capture Emily, then there is a pretty decent chance she will survive. She is definitely bleeding out, though, and dying. And then, you know, if it happens, so be it. In fact, you know what? I'm not even going to worry about it. Let's just cancel these. Because I don't think Emily's going to make it. Her, the timing was poor. She attacked overnight. So I don't think Emily's going to make it. Sorry, Emily. I've given up on you. And it looks like Grunt is... Ooh, go back. Grunt is fully healed? Oh, no, it wasn't Grunt. It was Captain. Whatever. Either way, Captain's fully recovered. When she, And then when she dies, we'll carry her body down here. Uh, but we need, we need steel. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, work, orders, mine. Mine that out, because that is steel right there. And I need more of that in order to finish my, uh, my cooking stove and all this other kind of stuff. That's very important. And Emily's dead. Poor Emily. I mean, she brought it on herself. She shouldn't have attacked. It was her own fault. All right, now we're getting steel, though. So this is good. That means we'll be able to make our electric stove, which means we'll be able to cook, which is very important for us because we're almost out of food. All right, there we go. So now we want to say, Bills, add Bill, cook, uh, no, not lavish meal. Cook simple meal, uh, until you have, let's say like 25. That should be good. Um, hunt the alpaca. What else is around here for me to hunt that's close? I want it to be close. Pretty much just the alpaca. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and then let's check work. Who's our best cook? Captain? All right, so you're going to be our number one cook and bodyguard. And hunter. You are the worst shot. There we go, finally. Hey, Captain. Prioritize hunt, hunt, finish the alpaca. Please. Just, there we go. And now we have the alpaca meat. So we're good. I do think, though, that this is basically the end of this day, and I think it's a good place to end the episode, my friends. Let's go ahead and do a save. Uh, and we'll say new arrival. Uh, actually, we'll just say LP1. So I know which one it is. There we go. I also want to ask you, there are going to be things that happen that go horribly wrong. Uh, on this series. If it would completely end the series, do you guys want me to save scum? Or do you not want me to save scum? I personally think that if we get completely wrecked by the game and that, uh, you know, something happens that would completely ruin our chances, or would essentially end the game for us, I think we should not save scum and we should just accept that we were beaten. Um, but I'd like to get your guys' opinions on it. I hope you're looking forward to the rest of RimWorld it's probably going to be a relatively long series because each game does take a while. But let me know your thoughts. Looking forward to it. Guys, that is going to do it for me. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Link's in the description. Other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.